Hi guys, welcome back to Farm Up with me, Dr. Daniel, a former medical doctor who, well, currently is keeping animals, <laughs> chickens and cattle, goats and sheep and of course growing some plants, yeah? So if you've been following the channel, you certainly do know where we are right now, back to the original farm and it's early in the morning, we're just going to feed the birds, yeah? Um, my really nice guys are going to feed the guys, you can see. You can see that we have a food dip and you saw what he did. Super, super important. So we have a food dip right here. I would have to step in it before we feed the bird. So I'll actually step in and go up with him and show you guys exactly what we are doing, exactly what we do while feeding the bird. So come on, let's get up there and just check it out. Of course, as you know, we do have birds both on the top floor and the bottom floor. So the feeding is actually going on concurrently. There's someone doing the same exact thing at the bottom floor. I'll probably go there in a bit. He started a bit earlier, so he might be a bit ahead. But as you might notice, the feeders are raised. Yeah, you guys can see that the feeders are raised. You see, all the feeders are raised. And this is a very ingenious and important way of feeding the birds compared to the other one where you just put all the feeders down at once. And you know why? Because it avoids a stampede during the feeding. During the feeding, if you just put all the feeders down and then you're just putting feed, you know, where you are, the birds will just surround you the entire time and you'll have a problem putting feed inside those feeders. And then the birds are just going to be stampeding. With this system of feeding, the birds are literally, you know, following you around. They're used to the fact that they're not going to have the feed right away. So they'll just move around with you. As you fill the feeders, you can see him putting feed inside the feeders that are actually raised. So as you fill the feeders, they just move around with you. And then just at once, you put all the feeders down. And then you also reduce on the risk of having one feeder emptying before the other feeders empty. Because the birds start feeding at about the same time. And you know, dropping the feeders can be done really, really, really quick. There you can see that we have one of the feeders. It's a bit lower than the rest. So the birds are actually trying to feed from it unlike the others which are really really raised this one is a bit lower unfortunately we can't raise it any further this one was just installed yesterday though so it's going to have to be corrected so that it's raised just a bit higher so that this is avoided you can see the birds trying to feed you know they are tiptoeing in order to feed some are even trying to jump up in order to feed uh, it makes sense but you can see that the rest of the feeders all the other feeders are raised up right here you can see the ones on the bottom floor yeah, the feeders are also raised. I don't know if I lower myself, you can see it very clearly that all the feeders are raised. And my colleague over there is called Joshua. Yeah, he's putting feed inside the feeders. So the birds are right here, are also waiting. You can see the feed inside here, right? Yeah, we have feed inside here, and the birds are well dispersed, nicely dispersed. It's not like they are all piling around him which used to happen for us in the past before we discovered this method you know all the birds would be around you but right now they won't surround you while you're feeding because they know that they're not going to get the feed right away this is a perfect 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 system and now that all the feeders do have feed the feeders can be lowered okay so we can lower them very nicely okay and the birds can have their feet. Okay. Yes guys, so we are done 
giving the birds their feed you can see nicely that they are all feeding i like how well distributed they are the place looks clean and uniform the birds don't show any sign of illness so they are feeding very well they have their water they have enough drinkers they have enough feeders and it's a cool morning so it's not hot uh, the feed will get done at about 4 pm currently the birds are about 13 14 weeks and today we're going to be debiking them we wanted them to give them some feed before you know we start the debiking but today we're going to be debiking them and ideally the debiking is going to be done a little bit late because the debiking should be done at 12 weeks but these ones are going to be done later and well it's not a very very big issue but the main reason is because i didn't want to use the debikers that are like scissors no I have a more automatic debiker, you know, it uses electricity and a flame. So in a few minutes, we're going to be dividing up the room, setting all the birds to one side, and then we're going to start the debiking one by one. So most probably we're only going to do one floor, maybe the top floor. Then the following day, we shall do the very bottom floor. And in case you're wondering why we're going to be debiking the birds, I know it's quite traumatic and it's painful to the birds, you know. There is a lot of pain, the beaks have nab endings they have blood vessels the birds bleed a little bit well it's because we want to avoid further pain further pain we've been lucky enough that even up to the 14th week the birds haven't developed any vices my first flock very very first flock in this house we had a vice that was developing it was called feather pecking you know they would pull out each other's feather and of course it's because feathers have particular nutrients that most probably the birds were lacking number two it's very common uh, my dad's previous flock the birds would peck each other's cloaca the anal opening and then they could eat each other's intestines i've actually had that same problem on you know the bigger farm with the duopas birds that we had we had birds eat another bird like literally eat it and the problem is that once they develop the vice it's very 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 difficult to stop so we have to make sure that we do it the birds this bird didn't come debiked on day one so we have to make sure that we do the, the debiking because honestly this is a small pain compared to what would happen if you know they would eat themselves they would literally eat themselves the other problem is you don't want them to eat the eggs egg pecking you know egg eating because if they have those sharp pointed beaks, it's very easy for them to tap on the egg and the egg cracks. And once the egg cracks, they're going to eat it. They're going to eat it. If they can't crack the egg, they will never eat it. They'll never know what it tastes like. So you also want to avoid, you know, the eggs being eaten. So in the end, you're going to have to do the debaking. So in the meantime, the drinkers actually being cleaned. They're cleaned every day. And it doesn't cost too much. It doesn't take too much water, but the positives are way higher than the negatives. So you, you'll notice that when the birds are drinking water, they don't take too much water when the drinkers are dirty. But when the drinkers are cleaned, actually you'll notice that when the guy is cleaning and the drinkers that he finishes drinking, all the birds go to because everyone loves clean stuff, right? They love drinking clean water. And meanwhile, these are our own farmer chicks, just in case you didn't know. They are our own farmer birds. They are raised right here on farm up i know you've seen them if you've been following the channel you've seen them being raised from our own parents talk you've seen the parents talk grow up you've seen it raised perfectly good conditions no illnesses we've hatched them and i'm one of the farmers who are raising them of course lots of farmers have bought them and a lot of them are bearing testimony of how good they are so they are very very good birds they're isa brown chickens and i'm very confident of what you're going to be getting you know they are putting on the weight perfectly and weight is the number one indicator of growth for the birds for you to know whether they'll get into production perfectly or not so they are putting on the weight perfectly everything is growing perfectly literally perfectly and just in case you want to order some of them you know just hit us up i leave our whatsapp number in the description below just send us a whatsapp or call us uh, and then we'll communicate with you see uh, how we can get the birds over to you otherwise you can see around the farm we have a fence a gate as you can see it has just been opened out the guy has moved out a little bit he's coming back in but as you can see it was locked every time someone gets in and every time someone gets out it remains locked he's gone to probably check out something and then you can see this has been working for us as a rubbish you know bin when we sweep up stuff we dump it over here after some time we shall be burning it of course and then the last time this place was very very bushy if you do remember very bushy and the gardens but these gardens have actually been planted <laughs> they've been planted these guys are really nice yeah so in instead of buying food and you know 
why not plant vegetables so we planted lots and lots of vegetables around here you can see that we have some firewood yeah this is uganda this is africa we still do use firewood to cook uh, not very energy friendly and you know environmentally friendly but it saves you a lot of money so you can see all this area has been planted you can see that there is some mulching that has gone on we have some manure that was put here you can see wood shavings again some mulching over there lots of vegetables have been planted and then here we have eggplants i don't know if they still do have eggplants on them honestly i think most of them are now grown up you can see i can pick up one eggplant over here yeah these are eggplants yeah so we had eggplants here i think really they are done so this will probably need to be cut down you can see this is an eggplant right here so I think this will need to be removed so that something else can be planted here. And again, you can see our chicken house. It's properly aerated on the sides. Very, very good aeration. It's probably not the best aeration. When I was telling the guys to build, they built the wall higher than I wanted to. I told them to make it, you know, lower, three feet. But they made it four feet and I didn't like it. I was very angry with them, but well. It's serving the purpose. So very soon we're going to be building another chicken house on my land. I've shared that land before on this channel, you know. It's two acres. Actually, recently I even acquired more of it. So it's about 2.7 acres, that property. And then uh, we're going to build another chicken house. The same style as this, but it's going to be built better and most probably cheaper because I'm not going to be using a brick wall. The brick wall is really unnecessary, not necessary at all. You know, you just need iron sheet to about three feet. And then I'll use a very, very good, you know, supporting structure, just like we did on the bigger farm to ensure that the floor doesn't sag in. I don't need to put a thin layer of concrete on top. It's totally unnecessary. I'll use very, very good plywood to make sure that it's strong, but then it's going to be the same exact style and it's going to be perfectly aerated that should be in maybe june or july this year once this bird start laying really all the money that comes out of here is just going to be used to build the other chicken house you know um so that we can expand to maybe four thousand first then maybe six thousand maybe ten thousand i don't know <laughs> whatever the lord will lead me to um that's what we shall be doing you can see our banana plantation here it's getting old so some of the banana plants have been cut down uh, we're going to be planting new banana plantations once the rain has fully come in. We've started getting some rain, but it's, it's not lots and lots of rain. But once the rain fully comes in and nicely, we're going to be planting more banana plantations. And anyway, let's go and start preparing for the debicking. Okay, guys, so we are back inside the place and we are preparing to start the debicking. You can see that we have a tarpaulin. It's a red tarpaulin, a long one. It can run the entire length from that end to the other end. And we've started to fix it in already. So we're going to hit it right at the top so that the birds are all trapped that side. So we're going to trap all the birds that side. And then we've got power over here. You can see we've got power coming inside and we also have an extension to give us a bit more length. And then this is the debicking machine that I told you about. I know some of you have seen the debicker. We've used it before. It uses a blade, yeah, that gets really, really hot. This blade gets very hot once you connect it to power. Here you can adjust the temperature to get to make it hotter or cooler. And here you can adjust the speed of the movement of the blade. Actually, let's just try it out so that you guys can see. Okay, now you can see that it's on. We have power right now. So you can see the blades warming up. You see it getting really hot. If you put your finger there, you would feel it. And then if you turn it on, then it will start moving. Turn on and you can see the blade starting to move. So it will go up and as it comes down, it cuts the beak. So we will put our beaks in the, you know, the biggest hole over there. And it will do the cutting. This decreases the temperature and this, you know, this decreases the speed. For example, right now we are making the thing cut quicker and then we can make it cut slower. Okay, so that's what you're going to be using. It uses a lot of electricity, so I'll turn it off for now. Okay. 
So guys, we've actually already started. Yeah, I've got to show you guys the starting. So um, you can see that all the birds have been divided, and we have some birds already this side. I know you can see them in the background, right? So what we are doing is that we are doing the debicking from that side. I've debicked some of the few birds, and then I've given my colleagues to also get a gist of it because, well, they need to learn everything, you know. You need to learn everything to be able to do it well under proper supervision. So they're actually doing it quite well. We're going to move inside there and I show you exactly what we are doing. So right here are the birds. All of them converged in this small area to make capturing them quite easy. And right here is where we are doing the debicking from. Okay, so I'll get closer. You see what... Yeah. And once the bird is done, it's thrown over that so that it falls the other side. Again. Okay. So I'll show you guys this bird. Okay. So you see how it has been debicked. You see the beak. So the beak has been cut off, you can see. So it's going to regrow a bit. Slowly, the lower beak usually grows quicker than the upper one, but then it's unlikely that it's going to go back to its initial length. And you can see how it has been cut. With the way it has been cut, it can't pick its colleague because it's not pointed uh, like a normal beak. With the pointing, it would be able to harm its colleagues, but it's not pointed, uh, it's not able to pick eggs, you know. Unlike, you know, the rest of the chickens, if you take a closer look at these chickens and their beaks, see how pointed that is? You see how pointed that is? That's terrible if it decides to peck an egg or peck its colleague. All right, guys, so we shall continue. Uh, I'm running out of battery. I mean, we have a lot of work to do. Lots and lots and lots of work to do. You know, there's very few chickens this side as of now, and most of the chickens are the other side. You can see a feather on my head, you know, I've been doing a lot of the debicking. So we shall continue. It's probably going to take us half the day to finish the a thousand bags or probably just a little bit less, but it's going to take us quite some time. So I'll leave you right here. Then we shall get done with the debicking. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Smash that notification bell. That way you never miss out on an upload. And don't forget to order for farm up chicks just in case you want to keep chickens. Lots of love. Bye-bye.